This video is probably going to be one of the hardest videos I've ever had to make, but I wanted to make this video in hopes of not only helping myself through the grieving process, but to help those that have gone through this too and to know that they're they are not alone and that what they're going through and what they're feeling is normal. I have noticed there isn't a lot of community support on YouTube regarding this tragedy and there really isn't a lot of information or community support on the internet because the situation is rare when it rare in pregnancy and um, I want to share my story because it's been a coping mechanism for me to talk about what happened and um, in the past with my losses I um, when I didn't talk about it or I buried the feelings it became dangerous to my health um, because it did put me into a very deep depression and the things that went along with that. So I've learned to talk through my grief and um, start the healing process. And I will warn you that this video is very, um, is probably going to be very emotional because this is still new. And um, I will be talking about things that might make those that are squeamish, uh, may, might make them uncomfortable. Um, I will be sharing um, graphic pictures regarding this, and um, if that's something that you don't feel comfortable with, I um, suggest that you don't watch this video or click over those parts, and I will put a little warning thing up regarding the pictures and things like that. So, um, I also want to um, warn those of you that have gone through a loss that this video might be a trigger for you. Um, so if that is something that you feel that you aren't able to handle, um, I also just suggest that you don't watch this video. I will be putting information in the description bar um, along with my email address and resources for those that want extra support or would like to share the story or to speak with me personally um, because I want to let you know that I'm there for you um, in any type of loss um, that you're going through. So I want to let you know that you know I'm here for you, that there's somebody here for you that will talk to you and be a support for you because I know what it's like to go through that. I know what it's like to feel that. It's going to yeah. start from the very beginning. The day after Super Bowl, I took a pregnancy test and it was positive. And Dave and I were in complete shock because we were not planning on that it happening that quickly um, because I was still breastfeeding. Um, I'm still breastfeeding our daughter and my cycles have not been regular, and um, I also have PCOS, and we've had trouble um, in the past conceiving. So um, we just were not expecting it to happen that quickly. Once the shock wore off and we collected ourselves, we got really excited and we started planning right away. The day after I got the pregnancy test, or the positive pregnancy test, I called my doctor right away and let them know that I got a positive pregnancy test and they wanted me to come in right away because I was spotting brown and um, at this point I wasn't really concerned because I've had spotting in every single one of my pregnancies and this was my fifth pregnancy. I lost three babies and um, I have two babies, two living rainbow babies. So I went into the doctor's office, they did blood work and um, they called me back the next day and told me that my HCG level was at an 18 and my progesterone was at a 2 and the nurse immediately said I was miscarrying. She said if my if it was a viable pregnancy, my progesterone levels would be higher um, and I explained to her my history. I just were really upset that she immediately told us that we were having a miscarriage just based off one test and um, I asked if I could have another um, blood draw done and she agreed. Um, so she sent the forms in for that, and the next day I went in and had my repeat um, HCG levels and progesterone levels. 
progesterone was rising and my HCG levels were rising so that was a sign of a viable pregnancy but my progesterone levels were still low so I was prescribed progesterone I've had it in every single one of my pregnancies so I kind of knew what to expect um, I was still spotting and that was also one of the reasons why I tested um, because I was having spotting for a couple of days and usually when I would have a spotting my period would my period would start right away um, but that didn't happen obviously because I was pregnant um, but I was still having the brown spotting. I started to take the progesterone, I was doing okay, I was feeling okay and then um, that night I woke up and I was bleeding pretty heavily. Um, it was comparable to a heavy period and at that point I was convinced I was miscarrying. Um, so we went into the ER. Um, before we went in, we dropped off Dallas and Sophia to my mom's, and we went to the emergency room. Um, they ran a bunch of tests. They took my blood. They did an ultrasound, and um, they came back and said everything was fine. My levels were still rising. Um, they told me to just take the progesterone. Um, they couldn't really see much on the ultrasound because it was so early. I believe at that point I was like three to four weeks along, so we found out pretty early. Um, and they had me follow up with my um, OB within a week. So um, a week after that, and I was still spotting in between this time. And at this point, I thought maybe I had like a subchorionic hemorrhage. Or maybe it was something to do with a corpus luteum cyst because I had that with Dallas and that was what um, I believe caused the spotting with him early in pregnancy. Um, so I, um, I had the follow-up ultrasound and we went in. They saw a gestational sac um, within the uterus, but it was really small at this point and um, they didn't really see anything within the sac because they assumed it because I was so early. Um, so I had a follow-up, they scheduled a follow-up ultrasound in two weeks, so I would have been um, seven weeks, seven and a half weeks, I believe, at that point, because I was five and a half weeks at this point. And um, that weekend, I went up to go to bed, and I immediately had this wave of nausea and then the severe pain hit and I can't even describe the amount of pain that I was in. It was worse than labor, it was a little worse than birth, it was the worst pain I've ever been in in my entire life. And it went from my left lower abdomen all the way to the right side and into my back. It just got worse and worse and worse and at that point I told Dave, I was like, I think I need to go to the emergency room. It was the middle of the night, so we weren't really sure what to do. We had both of our kids with us. They were sleeping. We didn't really want to wake them up. And the pain just started getting worse and worse and worse to the point that I couldn't sit. I couldn't stand. I didn't couldn't talk because it was so painful. Um, so at that point, I had Dave call for an ambulance, and they came and took me. And every movement they made with me on the stretcher, every bump on the highway, was excruciating. It felt like somebody was stabbing me and the pain was just my low, all over my lower abdomen into my back and up to my shoulders. Um, it was it was really, really painful. Got me into a room right away, me up to things right away. Um, they um, did an IV, they took blood, they did a urine sample um, and they pretty much told me that there wasn't a reason for the pain that I was having. They weren't really sure. They just classified it as a threatened miscarriage. And I was actually left in that room for almost two hours um, without anybody coming in to check on me, and I was in severe pain. By the time Dave got there, somebody finally came in, just asked if we needed anything, and then left. Um, so. The doctor came in and said that he wasn't going to do an ultrasound because they had one done prior and that because they didn't see anything within that ultrasound, he wasn't sure that he was going to see anything either. Um, so they sent me home. I was still in severe pain at this point and they just gave me Tylenol and told me to follow up with my doctor. I did not sleep that night when I went home. We were actually at my mom's house and I was still in severe pain and the pain was so bad that it was just constant pressure and pain in my rectum, in my bladder, in my vaginal area. It was really painful to use the bathroom. Um, 
my back and shoulders were aching my my lower stomach like around my belly button was really painful um I was just in a lot of pain. I followed up with my doctor the next day and it was actually the physician's assistant that I seen. And she pretty much told me the same thing that it was probably a threatened miscarriage or maybe it was something muscular um, because she did feel around in my belly and she's, you know, she said that this shouldn't be painful because I was, she was touching very lightly. Um, but she did bump up the ultrasound that I was supposed to have in two weeks. She bumped it up for the next week. And um, during that whole week, I was in pain. I was in pain. I didn't sleep much. I didn't eat much. Um, I did notice that I was bloating very badly, um, and it was very uncomfortable bloating. Um, I also had nausea, but it was accompanying with stomach cramps, kind of like what you would get when you had a um, food poisoning or the stomach flu and for the ultrasound at this point we were trying to be optimistic the pain subsided a little bit but it was still pretty painful to use the bathroom and we went in for the ultrasound and the um they checked it did the ultrasound over my belly and um right away she said i'm sorry but i don't see the gestational sac that was there before and at this point I thought that you know maybe she's maybe it's just because I'm still early um maybe the the machine isn't as good um I just tried to be as positive as I could be at that point so she sent me into the bathroom and had me take off my pants and underwear so she could do a vaginal ultrasound back up on the table she inserted the wand and she said I'm sorry but the gestational sac I don't see anything in it um, and then she kind of went over to my left side and I was in shock at that point because I wasn't sure what to feel I was confused because my levels were rising they told me everything was okay the, the bleeding was fine I was really confused and then um, she went over, kind of pushed it over to my left side, and I saw a gestational sac, or what looked like it to me, and I saw a baby with a heartbeat. And I, um, for a split second, I was really excited because I was like, oh, there's where my baby is. That's where they're hiding. And she goes... I know where your pain's coming from now. Your baby's in your tube. And I, um, I immediately just broke. I just broke up, broke down, and I just, Boris was upset as well. He, um, came over and laid his head on my arm, and I believe at that point he was crying too, and, um, she ran and got the doctor right away because I did have fluid or blood, uh, I believe, behind my uterus. After my doctor came in and said that um, I needed to go to the hospital right away um, because I have an ectopic pregnancy on my left fallopian tube. Um, so we took the 20-minute drive to the hospital and... Within that 20 minutes, we had to prepare ourselves to say goodbye to our baby. Um, and it was really hard and scary, and I didn't... I, did, I was just, I was so scared, and um, we got to the hospital, and... Uh, they got us in a room right away, and they immediately hooked me up to a heart monitor. Um, they took blood work. They hooked me up to an IV. Um, I met with the doctor that was there in the emergency room, and then I met with a um, OB resident, and she said that um, that they were going to perform surgery because, um, sadly, an ectopic pregnancy cannot survive. Um, within a full of tube and it's very dangerous for your mother if you leave it alone um, because it can be very fatal. 
Um, at this point, they weren't sure if my tube had ruptured. Um, they actually didn't find that out until I was in surgery. So I had to wait a little bit because I had eaten and they were concerned that if they um, had put me under then that I would um, aspirate the contents that were in my stomach. So I had to wait a little bit before surgery. Um, they monitored me very closely. Um, I did start bleeding more um, while I was there and having pain more and I don't know if that's because I was a lot more aware of what was going on or if things started to take a turn for the worst. After that was performing the surgery, he was also a partner with my doctor um, and I had met him before and he was very, um, he was very kind and um, he helped calm my fears a little bit because he shared his story that his wife and him had gone through the same thing and um, his wife was fine and that they were able to, to have children afterwards. Um, everybody was just really nice and really um, caring towards Dave and I and I cannot thank the hospital enough for what they did for us in those, in those um, hours leading up to surgery. So the anesthesiologist came in, I met with the, the um, operating nurse. They gave me something to relax me before I went into surgery because um, I was really scared. And um, I remember going down the hall um, into the operating room and I was just praying to God. And I'm like, please just be with me, be with the baby and um, let them know how much I love them and how sorry I am this happened. I said that prayer, I immediately felt peace and I went into the operating room and they moved me onto the table and it was a really hard table. Um, they gave me something in the IV to put me to sleep and then they put a mask over my face and told me to breathe in a few times and then um, I did and then I woke up in recovery. And then, uh, while in recovery, I heard the nurses say that my tube had ruptured, um, and it likely had ruptured, um, the week before when I was in that amount of pain. Um, I did not lose a lot of blood, though, thankfully, um, because my body, um, stopped that from happening. I was very fortunate in that aspect because I could have died. I could have, I could have bled to death and died, um. My tube was not able to be um, saved because there would have been too much damage. Um, but they su successfully removed my left fallopian tube. Um, I still have my left ovary and my right ovary and right fallopian tube um, recovery. And I just remember waking up. And every time I would wake up, I would call for Dave or I would ask where he was because I was scared and I knew that. If I saw him, that I knew I was okay. They finally wheeled me back. I don't even know what time this was. They finally wheeled back into, um, I guess, like a room. And um, Dave was there. And I was so happy to see him because I was just, I knew everything was going to be okay. And um, he showed me the pictures of uh, surgery and they were really hard to look at. Um, I, in fact, I haven't really looked at them um, since the day after, just because they are hard for me to look at. I ended up going home the next day, and um, I just took it easy, um, and I had follow-up appointments with my doctors, and um, I will explain more um, regarding the next steps um, and recovery and things like that um, in another video. We did decide to take the baby's remains and we had to sign waivers for that um, because sadly the hospital doesn't think of it as a baby. They think of it as um, human medical waste, which is what it said on the paper. And we had to sign paperwork to take the baby's remains with us so that we could bury them. And we are actually going to be doing that this week. Um, we're having a little ceremony with our family. Um, and that's something that we wanted to do because um, we never were given that 
option in the past and um, I think it would be a part of giving us closure um, to take the baby and bury them. The hardest part about all of this is that our baby was healthy and they had a heartbeat and I just keep thinking of what could have been had they been in the right spot. I struggled and still struggle with feelings of guilt because they couldn't survive and I just wish that my body would do what it's supposed to do and carry pregnancies to full term and not to have complicated pregnancies and just everything that's accompanying it. I just, I have so much guilt and I know that there was nothing I did to cause this or nothing I could have done to prevent it. I know this and I know this, I know this and my doctors have told me this and my husband's told me this. It's just something that I think I struggle with spiritually and as a mother, I just feel like it was my job to protect this is a part of the series of videos that I will be making. Um, but I just wanted to get this one to be the first one and hopefully these next few videos won't be so emotional. But I just want to let those of you know that if you're going through this, I'm here for you and I know what it's like and I'm sorry this has happened. So all my contact information below in the description box as well as resources for those that um, want extra support. Um, I will be creating a Facebook group um, for trying to conceive and loss um, and I will have a link for that below as well if you would like to join and I um, ask that if you do join that you share it with others that have gone through this um, or that are trying to conceive um, because I want it to be a big community um, for those that are struggling with infertility or um, struggling with trying to conceive or loss or an ectopic pregnancy. Um, I kind of just want it to be like a one-stop place um, for all of you, for all of